bottles and a toilet brush. Huh? Including this one. <laughs> no, seriously. Now this class, I think, in my estimation, has more characters, and I use that in quotations, more characters than any other class I've taught. I remember some fascinating discussions with Henry and with Armando. Armando had lots of questions, and some of them were tough. Uh, and Henry had a fair amount also. Solomon was very quiet. He didn't make much of a fuss. I'm still quiet. <laughs> Um, Fernando, is Fernando here yet? No. I saw him the other day. He hasn't changed a bit. He hasn't turned the volume switch down yet either. Uh, Fernando and Belinda were a remarkable, are a remarkable couple. The second reason that this class is uh, memorable because if my memory has served me right, I have to think back 30-some years now, that's rather treacherous. But I think this was the last, last year that I taught full-time as a classroom teacher. Because then we went to the States, for a year we came back, and the school I had transferred to uh, Kansas City, where it is now. And uh, I started in that year as a part-time supervisor in the high school department. So I was only teaching, I think, one or two classes, and not in fourth year. And uh, then the following year, I became a full-time supervisor, and that about ended my teaching days except for Bible classes. So I didn't have the contact with the students in those last years that we were here, the last 10 years, didn't have the contact with them that I had with you in the previous classes. And of course, that makes a difference. I was able to get acquainted with you much better because I had more one-to-one -one contact. And uh, it was a rich experience. You were wondering what are we doing or what each of us are doing, or what have we been doing since we left Grace? My wife and I served a small Presbyterian church in Brainerd, Minnesota, about in the center of the state. <coughs> we were there at that church for the same amount of years that we were at Grace. And then I retired officially, and a few months later I was invited to uh, help out in another church as a visitation pastor. And when I told them that I had been here, we had been here at Grace for 18 years, and at the Presbyterian Church for 18 years, they said, does that mean 18 years here too? I said, no, I think perhaps not. But we are enjoying working in this church now because it is a very rapidly growing church. 10 years ago, it was a small congregation of about 120 people. Now, Ten times that. On a Sunday morning, we have anywhere from 11 to 1,300 people. I'm doing some visitation work. I'm also teaching an adult Sunday school class most of the time. Some Wednesday night adult classes. Preaching sometimes in that church, although not very often, but once in a while. Preaching in several churches in the area when pastors are on vacation or gone for whatever reason. So officially I'm being paid to work for 10 hours a week. Uh, my wife tells me I put in much more hours than that. I don't keep track. We're enjoying what we're doing. I'm enjoying what I'm doing. And the thing I enjoy about this church is I get a ringside seat at what God is doing in that community and I have almost zero responsibility. So I can just sit there and enjoy and watch what's going on. And it's a real thrill, because God is at work. And when Sam introduced his song and mentioned, for instance, that when he left Grace, he left his Bible behind, I remember those days, because Sam's older brother, Alex, and I, we got pretty close together. I knew his sister, Rosalind. 
she was in a, an experimental class that I had in Philippine economics. That was the first class I taught at Grace, and Mr. Gitcher was your class advisor for that class of 59. And that was a burden to his family and to me. And then we kind of lost track of each other. We haven't had much contact. So tonight is an evidence. God is still at work. On the way coming here, we had a lot of time to converse, Mr. Kitcher and I, because of the traffic and so forth. And I made the observation that if I didn't know better, it would be very easy to be extremely discouraged. As you look at the political scene, you look at the social scene, you look at the moral scene, any country you want to name, this one or the states or any other, very easy to become discouraged unless you believe and you know, realize there is a sovereign God who has a purpose. And he's working out that purpose. And we're privileged to be a part of that. And he, Jesus Christ, says, I will build my church. And he's doing that, and we're privileged to be a part of it. Thank you so much. After trying to prepare you for college, because uh, sometimes the memorization doesn't work in college, and there you have to have understanding. So I think you forgave me for those little five quarter sheet of paper quiz questions, right? <laughs> Remember? At first, you complained about it, and then you caught on, and you started doing it. And then when I didn't give a quiz, you complained. <laughs> so something happened, and I'm glad for that. I'm glad for the academic improvement. And uh, whatever help there was, the Lord blessed, and you benefited, and we got a blessing as well. But I'm especially glad for the spiritual part some of you have shown real desire to go ahead and serve the Lord in a real way. And the Lord has blessed you for it. And we're thankful for that. And I'm thankful that I had a little part in it. And then as I told the, the staff this morning at Grace Christian High School, uh, I've seen some changes years later. And that's your time to lay, this, lay the foundation for, for others then you see the results years later. So keep looking forward to that day when somebody will say, as he's saying here, I'm so glad you came into my life. So it means a lot. And we're grateful for the kindness you've shown and you filled us up to where uh, I'm starting to push the buttons on my shirt, making me a little too proud for thinking that I was such a great one. But it wasn't our doing. We prayed and the Lord blessed. Now you pray, and you watch the Lord bless. Thank you. Mr. Roman? It's, uh... <laughs> you know, we've been trying to figure this out. I know the commissioners have talked about it. Why do they call the classes batches? <laughs> Batch of 66. <laughs> We, we thought they misspelled it, watch, batch. <laughs> no, it is a real joy to be here this evening. As I said, I'm being very honest. I remember very little about the class of 66. But I do remember one person especially, and I'm not going to embarrass him too much. Guess who? <laughs> Ming Don Weber. <laughs> You say that uh, name and the teachers <laughs> like that. I remember Maine was a real challenge to me when he was in my class. We were, and uh, I should say I was, trying some new things in the English department. We tried debating, we tried journalism, we tried this, that, and the other. And uh, Maine seemed to have the opposite opinion of many of the other students in the class. But I told the students when we started studying debating, and you know, it's an argument that's supposed to be under control, he would take the opposite side. So I said to them, it is not the 
truth or the error that will win in a debate, but it's how you prepare, how you document, whether you show enthusiasm, etc., etc., etc. And I believe that Maine was on the opposite side of most of us, and their team won. So that proved the point that I was trying to make in that part of our instruction. There are many other people in that class I might say something about. It's a delight to me to come back to Grace and to, uh, I shouldn't say bump into, but go to Grace and find Belinda. She's like a ray of sunshine, always smiling, always happy, and her husband, Fernando. It is really very delightful. We want to thank you for inviting us this evening. We're enjoying every moment of our stay. It seems to get better all the time. I'm not sure we'll make it for the next one, but thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Kincher? <laughs> Don't hide behind the camera. I guess you can see you. <laughs> I really was very old in 1966. <laughs> I had been graduated from Grace Christian High School for three years already, and I had gone back to the States, remember? Since I didn't know the class of 66 very well, I'd like to say that when I came to Grace Christian High School, I was very young, really, an experience. I had never taught before, except in Sunday school and youth work. And I contacted Mrs. Tan and said, do you want me to take a year of teaching in the United States? And she said, no. We will teach you the way you should teach when you get here. I learned so much from her. I learned, among other things, that you should be concerned for the next generations. And that's a very scriptural concept. It's in the Old Testament. It's in the New Testament. I think it's part of the heritage of Chinese people. It should be the heritage of American people and the world to think not just of your own self or your children's education, but as Joel says in the Old Testament, as Paul says in the New Testament, of the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. Mrs. Tan recognized that and, and I learned that from her. And I saw it illustrated in the life of one of the ladies in church at, uh, on Nakahan Street one time when she said, I'm praying for my grandchildren. And now that would not seem odd except that she didn't have any grandchildren. She didn't even have any children who were grown yet. None of them were married. They were just children in the school and I was teaching them. And she was thinking about who's coming next. She was praying for her, the mates, the husbands, the wives of her own children, when they were not ready to be married. And she was praying for her grandchildren before there were any grandchildren. That's wisdom. So I learned some wisdom when I came to Grace. And I thank you all for evidencing, evidencing in your lives tonight that that wisdom is right. Be concerned for the next generations. And some of you have shown it, and I appreciate that very much from my heart. My wife had never been here before, and it's been 37 years since I was here. We are just enjoying this enormously. I think uh, my wife, Gloria, is learning a great deal about me, and I think she's also learning a great deal about you, and I'm sure she's enjoying it. Thanks from our hearts. One experience I remember that um, impressed me very much, the students put on some kind of a performance where each one of them mimicked the teacher. And the moment that the best, a student came in, we all knew exactly which teacher it was, <laughs> by the way they walked, by whatever they did. And one of the young ladies in my biology class came in with a huge jar, with, I think it was a pickled pig, 
and she said, Cook class, isn't this beautiful? <laughs> <clears throat> well, I did think that the plants and animals we studied were fascinating, and I still do. I love the outdoors. I love the beautiful, monkless world that God has created. But I feel so privileged that the Lord allowed me to teach you students and to have the opportunity to help shape your lives, to help you know the Lord better, and discover the privilege of living for Him. I think back to the 12 years that I was here, and if I could turn back the clock, I would do exactly the same thing. I have no regrets, I just have a wonderful sense of privilege and honor that God would allow me to serve Him in that way at Grace Christian High School. And now that I'm retired, I find myself happily busy. I told the Lord the day that I officially retired, and I might say, I was Dean of Women at Columbia Bible College and Seminary before I retired. I had been in that position for 14 years. And the girls had a special banquet for me. It was a surprise. And they sang the song that was sung tonight, Thank You for Giving to the Lord. And uh, it, it really brought back a lot of memories to me because they wanted to express their appreciation for my ministry with them. But the day that I officially retired, I said, Lord, <clears throat> I have 24 hours of discretionary time, and they all belong to you. You fill them any way you wish. And I've never been bored. I've never wondered what to do each day. I wake up with a great sense of excitement and anticipation. The Lord has allowed me to be a volunteer at one of the largest hospitals in the county. Um, it's a trauma unit. They have a helicopter for the most serious cases that come from all over the state. And I'm in orthopedics and surgery. And I look forward to every single Tuesday when I come in in my pink lady uniform as a volunteer. The Lord has allowed me to pray with more than 30 of the patients that I work with. I don't volunteer to pray, I don't walk in and say, may I pray with you? But they have asked me to pray with them. And I just thank the Lord that they feel free to talk with me. And um, I feel extremely comfortable in that position and I've had so many opportunities to share the Lord with those who don't know Him, and for those who are weak Christians, discouraged, disheartened, perhaps really um, slipping away from the Lord, when I discover that, I have a chance to challenge them all over again and share with them the joy of knowing Him. I also uh, am still involved at Columbia International University where I was Dean of Women, I have been asked to supervise students who are doing for the Christian service ministry in nursing homes. And we have worked with seven nursing homes this uh, year, this semester I should say, and I had 22 students uh, in those nursing homes. And their growing regard and sensitivity to elderly people was wonderful to see. Many of them said, in fact, I walked into, I observed these students, I walked into one uh, resident's room. He was an 85-year-old man in a wheelchair. And he looked up, and when he saw the student with me, he said, he's my best friend. I was just thrilled, because that's what, that's what it's about, to touch lives, to develop relationships wherever God places us, whether we're in a formal ministry situation, or just with a next door neighbor or a clerk in the store. We represent him. What a wonderful privilege God has given us. And now I think of Elizabeth Elliot's words. She's one of my favorite authors. She said, I put myself gladly, fully, and forever at his disposal and to whatever he says. My answer is yes. Last but not least, we'd like to 
us, uh, either one Mr. or Mrs. Gomez, they have been both personally very dear to me because when I was growing up, Mrs. Gomez was my was our family children. So we have a special tie between us. <laughs> I did not already offer staying in Greece. <laughs> we have been in Greece for 42 years. But until now, we are not deported yet. <laughs> I do not know how long the Lord will still uh, give us the privilege of working in Greece. But we leave it to Him. Uh, I think we still, we can still work. We are still very much alive and kicking. And we can do our work still. Uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to to remember names, especially at my age. I have to confess that when I meet alumni, wherever they are, they greet me, but I could not remember the name. I can remember faces, but names, with so many thousands, who graduated in Greece, I cannot remember your names anymore. So you have to forgive me. You know, I remember uh, Bob Hope said, there are three signs of old age. One, number one is forgetfulness. The second, second and third, he forgot. <laughs> so, uh, that is, but I, I think I am still younger than Bob Hope. I can still remember things. Well, uh, when we came to Grace, I came ahead of my wife. When I applied in Grace, it was because Mr. Betten Bender was on furlough and they need a physics teacher. So I applied, and it was Dr. Spar who interviewed me, and also Mrs. Tan. I was not so much interested, because to think of Manila being a big city, I came from the province, I think. Manila is a big city, and I know how we can live there. But then I was accepted, so I took it as a sign that the Lord must be leading us to this place. After one year, Mr. Bender came back and I said, Dr. Spar, I'm just a substitute teacher in my term is already uh, ended and maybe I have to go back to the province. Dr. Spar said, uh, I still need you. I want you to help me in the office. And then, but my wife is still in the province. And uh, Mrs. Spar said, you know, I need an elementary teacher. I need more teachers in the elementary. Tell your wife to come. If she will not come, you go back to the province. <laughs> but we decided to come and my wife followed. And so we started the second year. And I think the rest is history. I don't know, uh, maybe we cannot say history repeats itself, but this time history is not willing to end itself. We are still here. <laughs> Thank you very much. I heard that uh, Mr. Gregory, although he was not in our class, is a, is a very good uh, Fokinese. She can, uh, he can speak Fokin fluently. Charlie, eat your heart out. Let's hear a few words from him. Boki, great that's it. Well, my wife and I came in 1968 we were not here when the class of 1966 was, obviously. 
But we feel very privileged and honored to be a part of your celebration tonight. And we thank you very much for inviting us as well. As Brother Kincher mentioned, I too would challenge you to be sure your children pick up the heritage and the things that you've taught them, the things that, that the missionaries have taught you, you teach to your children and they teach to their children and continue on. It's so important that our children continue on the heritage, especially the Christian heritage, the principles of God's Word. And I would also challenge you to re-examine your view of God. In this day and age, so many people are so busy in their lives that God is there when you need Him. But the God of the Bible is a holy, completely holy and righteous God. And I would challenge you to re-examine what your view of God is because that will affect what you look at, what you listen to, where you go, and those are so, so important, so many important things to be considering in this day and age when the world is caught up in. Do what you feel like doing. Do what you want to do. It doesn't matter. If it feels good, do it. But that's not what the Bible teaches. And so I would just challenge you to re-examine that view. And thank you very much once again for including us. And we trust that we will hear, we will continue to hear great things uh, coming from the class of 1966 in the future. Thank you. Well, I, I, I uh, in behalf of the uh, class, we thank you very much also for this evening of get together and fellowship, and uh, and uh, as a gratitude from my class uh, uh, for the song. Uh, being rendered by uh, Mr. Samuel with thanksgiving in our hearts. Uh, all of us appreciate it by your efforts and uh, your patience in uh, guiding us and teaching us. Uh, and, uh, after 34 years, all of us, all of us, and uh, we formally. Uh, uh, from all of us, we share the same sentiments of uh, thanksgiving in our hearts, and uh, we would like to give some gifts to our teachers, and as I call them, uh, our classmates. So, uh, in a gratitude, uh, give you some gifts. And uh, I'd like to call first uh, Mr. Peter Bender, not by seniority. <laughs> are suggesting that uh, we will be going to you and you know, showing our gratitude by our gifts. And uh, we'd like to give another gift also to Mr. Johnson for uh, being so patient. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. and Mrs. Gomez. Thank you very much for your patience in guiding us through those years when we are still growing up. And uh, we hope to be a good testimony of uh, what you did for us in our lives. And uh, we also like to uh, ask Mr. Robert Cuyuto to come here. He's the one who owns this place. To He's also a uh, classic student, Grace Christian High School. Good evening, I'm not part of this uh, class, what's your 65, yeah, yeah. class 70, <laughs> I'm younger than them. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it's nice to see all of you here. My wife pulled me out of the house uh, and I heard that Mr. Johnson, Mr. Peter Bender, all of you, Mr. Gomez will be here. And uh, I think it's uh, nice to see all of you. I, I don't know if uh, you remember me. But uh, I'm not one of the top of the class, but uh, <laughs> Roma remembers me. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoy the place uh, and the food. If, uh, if you don't uh, satisfy with it, we can repeat it again before you guys leave. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I think uh, we'll be seeing each other at the Etza Plaza sometime this month. So I hope you can uh, you can see more of our uh, of your student and uh, everybody is fine and I think uh, everybody would love to uh, welcome all of you here back to Philippines and uh, we hope to see you again. Thank you. We would like to ask Mr. Dalton to give us some sort of reverend no. Did I pronounce your name right? Give us a few words. <laughs> well, I thank you very much for uh, putting us on the invitee list to come here tonight. My wife will be very, very disappointed. When I said goodbye to her this morning, I had no idea that this invitation was going to come my way. And uh, she will be very sad that she could not join with us tonight, but she's been very busy uh, working with the young people at the CCP. Um, my wife and I served 44 years in America in pastoral ministry. 1966, we were just ready to move over to our third church in Cedarville, Ohio, where we stayed for nine years, and we served for 44 years until 1995 when we reached that magic age of retirement, when the government could help us out with what they call social security. And so we uh, entered into retirement, but we're very uneasy with all the time we had on our hands. And uh, I did, I, I, I've i been working since I was uh, actually 14 years of age when I got working papers. And so we were invited by ABWE to go over to Bangkok, Thailand to serve a short term of missionary service working with the English speaking foreign prisoners in the four prisons of Bangkok. And we enjoyed our ministry abroad so much that ABWE uh, learned that we were willing and available to uh, go elsewhere in the world. And it was at that time that Dr. Tan was appealing to the association, which was very instrumental in working with Julia, Judy, Julia Tan in uh, giving birth to Grace in 1950. And so he appealed to the mission to see if they could find somebody to come back. For since the mid-70s, there was not a missionary presence at the school. And uh, some people were feeling very badly about all the missionaries having left Grace, having been there for uh, 20 plus years. and. Uh, so they appealed to ABWE, and ABWE appealed to us, and then we in turn appealed to our friends and churches 
in America that could help us come. So we came in 1998 and served the school year 1998-99 uh, and uh, we were very, very busy. Uh, I taught the, uh, all the sections of the graduating class, the fourth year high school, uh, except for the star class. That's reserved for Dr. Tom. Did, did you have star classes in 66? No, we were, we were star all the time. <laughs> The 50 sections of the elementary school didn't teach actually, but she read Bible stories to the young people in an American English uh, diction. And uh, that kept her busy. And now we're back again for another year, the 2000 2001 school year, uh, with a missionary presence at the school. And she's again teaching, reading Bible stories to all 46 sections of the uh, elementary school on a rotating basis. She gets into the classroom about once every three weeks on the rotation. She gets into the classroom with the students. And then I teach again the graduating class, the high school year. And they've been very wonderful students so far. They would match any one of you. And uh, I'm sure that when they graduate, they're gonna go on to do great things. I was certain that the owner of this place was going to give each of the missionary a Porsche. <laughs> and I was, I was weeping because I was not going to get one. <laughs> uh, my wife teaches chapel every Monday and every Wednesday, and then I teach, I um, teach the chapels on Thursday and MC the chapels and my wife has been involved in the CCP uh, production down there. She was asked when she first began to uh, to help them with their diction, uh, their English. So if they do quite well on Wednesday and Thursday night, and I hope that all of you will take the time to go down at least one of those two nights and see the production of these 140 young people down at the CCP. If they do well with their English diction pronunciation, it's my wife that's to get the credit, but if they don't, <laughs> she also gets the credit. <laughs> uh, but that's where she is. She's been down there since 9 o'clock this morning and come back at 11 o'clock, and then she goes down again tomorrow, the same schedule, comes back at 11 o'clock. Wednesday, she goes down at the same time, comes back at 11 o'clock goes down Thursday, same time, comes back at 11 o'clock, and she just turned 70 years old in, on June the 10th. So uh, she's very, very busy. In fact, I feel ashamed that she's busier than I am. Here I'm enjoying this lovely thing tonight, and she's uh, down there. Uh, in a more serious vein, um, I got a call last evening about 9 o'clock from a from a batch of 2,000 graduate. Lovely, lovely Christian girl. I won't give her name, but uh, I, I taught her uh, back in 1998 also in some special uh, venues. But uh, she's, she's very distressed. She's in a Catholic university. Which one would that be? UST. UST, UST, that's at it. And uh, she's being bombarded with a lot of uh, secular theology and, and she's very troubled because the professor is very, very good. He's an excellent teacher and uh, he has impressed her greatly and she's being taught in her theology class by this very personable, uh, impressive teacher that the Bible is filled with mistakes and filled with errors and contradictions and, and it really can't be trusted. Uh, and so she's got to go through that theology and, and it's tearing her apart because I know the kind of a girl she was uh, when I first met her in 1998. And, and she's still very committed. She loves the Lord, but she's being challenged. A lot of these young people who graduate uh, sometimes they have great struggles, and uh, you should be concerned about students like that who graduate and go off to secular universities and 
and maybe their faith is challenged beyond their ability to stand up under the pressure, but I'm certainly glad that she's letting me have some uh, contact with her now and trying to help her out a little bit. Uh, again, thank you very much for including me in this uh, celebration tonight. Uh, I'm delighted to serve as a uh, missionary of grace, bringing, bringing back the missionary uh, presence at the school. Thank you. It's nice to know that uh, Grace is still in good hands. I thought we had to leave the whole back up to come back here. <laughs> Passing on from our missionaries. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 